Improving Practice, an Introduction to Action Research in Mathematics Classrooms. First, we'll begin by comparing research methods. In general, there are two research methods, quantitative and qualitative, and they differ in a variety of ways. For example, with respect to the type of data collected, quantitative research is typically numerical data, where qualitative research is non-numerical, it's narrative and visual data. In terms of the research problem, quantitative research deals with hypotheses and research procedures stated before beginning the study. In qualitative, research problems and methods evolve as understanding of the topic deepens. With quantitative research, there is a manipulation of context. Qualitative research, however, you are simply trying to describe the context. In quantitative research, the sample size must be larger to have any sort of viable conclusions. For qualitative research, the sample size can be much smaller because, again, it's very descriptive in nature. Quantitative research relies on statistics, whereas qualitative research relies on categorizing and organizing data into patterns to produce descriptive narrative synthesis. In quantitative research, there is little interaction with the participant. With the qualitative research paradigm, there's extensive interaction. In some ways, qualitative, quantitative is, um, in a sense, hands-off, and qualitative is very much hands-on. In terms of an underlying belief system, quantitative research believes that we live in a stable and predictable world that we can measure, understand, and generalize about. Qualitative research has the understanding that meaning is situated in a particular perspective or context that is different for people in different groups. Therefore, the world has many meanings. And it's true that most research doesn't blindly fall into one or the other of these research paradigms. Most research is some sort of blend between quantitative and qualitative, especially when you're dealing with something like action research. Now, why action research? What is it? Action research from a critical perspective. Action research is participatory and democratic. For example, you've identified an area in your teaching that you believe can be improved. You decide to investigate the impact of using GeoGebra when teaching perimeter and area to monitor whether or not it makes a difference in student understanding. Action research is also socially responsive and takes place in a context. You're concerned that ESL students in your classroom are not being presented with a math curriculum and teaching strategies that are culturally sensitive. You decide to learn more about how best to teach ESL students and to implement some, sort of, some of these strategies. Action research also helps teachers examine their everyday practice. For example, you've adopted a new mathematics problem-solving curriculum and decide to monitor its impact on student performance on open-ended problem-solving questions and students' attitudes toward mathematics in general. Action research can be liberating for students and teachers. You investigate the perceptions of colleagues, students, and parents toward the common core to more fully understand why the existing course of study is not producing desired outcomes. Based on what you learn, you implement new workshops for families and monitor their impact on attitudes. Furthermore, action research can be viewed from a practical perspective. Teachers have decision-making authority. For example, your school has adopted an approach that provides teachers with a choice for textbooks for Algebra 1. You decide to investigate the effectiveness of a technology-enhanced ebook on students' process skills and attitudes. Teachers are committed to professional development. Based on nationwide assessments, 
um, the faculty at your school determined that measurement skills are one of the least developed math concepts for your students. The staff decide to enroll in Annenberg's math line workshops to improve the ways teachers teach measurement. Teachers reflect on their practice. As an example, you're a successful mathematics teacher who invites guests to observe in her classroom. You believe that part of being a professional is the willingness to continually examine your teaching effectiveness. And finally, teachers can use a systematic approach to studying teaching and learning. You've decided to monitor the effectiveness of weekly math lab activities. You record students during labs, administer weekly concept prompts, interview students, mid and post term, and administer a common exam with other teachers. Now we'll describe the typical steps that are required when doing action research. And this is called the action research spiral. We always begin by identifying an area of focus. What is it you're interested in? What questions do you have? What would you like to study? From there, you can either develop an action plan or collect data. Much of this depends upon your primary focus, whether it's quantitative or qualitative. If you do develop an action plan, you'll need to implement the action plan and then collect data. After collecting data, the next step would be to analyze and interpret the data. After analyzing and interpreting the data, it may be necessary to, to collect more data, or maybe new questions have arisen that you'd like to examine and collect data on those. You could also go from analyzing and interpreting data to developing an action plan where developing the action plan actually becomes the conclusion to your paper. What will you be doing in the future now that you know this about the past? In general, there are two popular paths for conducting action research. The first way to conduct action research might be, again, identifying an area of focus is primary and first on the list. Then you may collect data. From the data collection, you can analyze and interpret the data and follow up with an action plan. Notice that the action plan is the conclusion of this action research project. Another popular path is to start with an area of focus, develop an action plan, often in conjunction with trying to compare two different types of methods. Collecting data then to determine which method may be more uh, beneficial to students and then analyzing and interpreting the data. Both of these are very viable to do in action research. Notice you'll always start with identifying the area of focus, but from that point it branches. You either, uh, the next step would be to develop an action plan or the action plan would come at the very end of the cycle of research. So it really depends on where you want to uh, focus your attention, whether you want it to be mostly qualitative, which would mean that you would collect data early, analyze and interpret the data, and develop an action plan, or whether you want it to be more quantitative, where you develop an action plan implement changes to the classroom, collect data, and then analyze and interpret that data. And that concludes our introduction to action research.